Okay, it's all you. It's all me? Yeah, go all ahead. All right. Ready to go? Yeah. All right. Enter the show. Let's do this. Let's go. Welcome back, everybody. Oh, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> what, the was dad, it because the I dad threw me off. The dad threw me off. <laughs> what do I do? Like, I don't want to sit here all awkward. Um, I'll know. just sit here. Go for it. All right. Okay. All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Good Neighbor Podcast with the good neighbors, Ryan and Mr. Colton Unger. What's good? Back for episode number two. Yeah, absolutely. We're we're back this time. Last I time know. you said we were I back. I can't believe that we're doing this. I Dude, I'm, I I'm loving it. I honestly thought we, it would be a one-hit wonder. No, nah, I'm loving it. But we couldn't stop. We got so much good feedback. Yeah, i loving everyone's episode. feedback that we're getting. Spotify, YouTube, everything. Yeah. You know, a lot of people really I've good. talked to about it. I said nothing but good things. Yeah. Even people, I've tried to talk to people that would give me like brutal Same feedback. Here. I honestly didn't show it to anybody that would have been like, oh, it's great. Because I know those kind of people wouldn't even listen to it. So I like showed it to a lot of our friends that would show, you know, a lot of uh, passion and roasting us. Yeah. And they couldn't even do it. So. Yeah, no. And, and I think that's good. You know, I think we're off to a really good start. I think so. so. I think it's been good so far. Did I hit record up there? Yeah. You see your ad? Okay, I'm colorblind, so I can't see it. Like, <laughs> I forgot right, you colorblind. Anyway, I forgot um, you colorblind. Yeah, that it's good. Sucked. The cool thing is we put this on the Appalachian Outlaws channel on YouTube. We're almost to 300 subs already. I didn't look. I yeah, didn't look. 300 That's subs. Sweet. We got like 30,000 video views this month. So it's, That's pretty sweet. It's dude. looking cool. I'm happy we're doing this. This is a lot of fun. Yeah. And I, it was yeah, cool to like dude. watch back like the first yeah, no, episode. Yeah, whenever I, I was sitting at work and I was listening to it throughout the day and it's just like like it's weird because you're hearing your own voice right but at the same time it's really cool because like this is what we did and then i didn't listen to it until then yeah and the cool thing is like we think that now but like a year from now or two years from now we're gonna look back on it and be like dude life is so much different i know i know it's pretty cool i don't know life's gonna be a little bit different here coming up i just feel like the super bowl the daytona 500 like that's like the start of spring yeah, and there's get, so yeah. much going on. So yeah. speaking this, of the Super Bowl, while we're kind of yeah. on the topic, um, you know, I I lied to everybody. I'm you gonna, did I'm lie gonna to be everybody. honest about it. And I should have trusted Tails Never Fails. And I told everyone that the coin flip was gonna be heads, and, I, yeah. and I'm sorry about that. A lot I, of people I really lost am. money in Vegas because of you. Because of weekend, me, bud. Yeah, everybody Man, if you're the, if you're relying your picks. your picks on me. For like yeah, we if we talk living, about sports on here, we need to put like a disclaimer in the description. Do, like, do not, not bet our, on our. Don't take our. Don't advice use our on betting sports. advice. No. Yeah. No. Don't take our advice. Period. Because hey, I, there's not really anything going on up here. That's I hit one bet. Following. The opening kickoff went for a touchback. There you Simple go. bet. You know. I don't know. So I had a different experience with the Super Bowl. I showed up to our buddy Noah's house. Shout out Noah. He's gonna come on someday. Absolutely. I, I think we gotta have I can't him wait. on soon. I can't wait. Uh, Marine veteran, um, mechanic. Yeah, I think he's got. I think he's fellow. got a lot to talk about. Um, yeah, he'll, he'll have a lot to talk about. But I went over to Noah's house, and like he's a new football fan, so he oh, never yeah, he really is. watched football yeah, before. Is. And then when Kenny Pickett started with the Steelers, mm. his girlfriend went to Pitt. Oh, so yeah. she of course like had to act like she was like best friends with Kenny Pickett, and we had oh, to watch like the, she knew him had every class. You know, love her to death, but we had a lot of fun watching the Steelers. But Noah was new to football, mm. so like. When it's the Chiefs and the Eagles, like I feel like, and maybe he's going to call me and say you're wrong about this one, <laughs> I but I does. feel like he really didn't have any desire. He had no to, stake in the game. Right. And for me, it was the same way. Like we talked last week. I really don't like Patrick Mahomes. Yeah, I don't know. Now, I'm going to say that now, but we're going to get into the spiel here. I don't like the Eagles. I hate like the fan it's, base amongst them. I, I think part of it has to be the fact that we're Pittsburgh fans, right? And so there's it's just difficult. there's just a deep rooted hatred in your right. in your cross state rival, right? So for me, the Super Bowl itself, there's one thing I took away from it. I gained respect for Patrick Mahomes on Sunday. For Patrick Mahomes, I because, I would have I'd have to say. Well, I mean, I guess as a Patrick Mahomes hater, that is a big thing for right. you. It was, it's a huge thing for me. I just don't, I thought he was a cocky, arrogant prick, um, which wow. he take. proved everybody wrong on that because he was injured and he yeah. was, he came out the second half and was running the ball down the field. Yeah, no, he it, had some, you big know, plays. he literally made plays he had and some big plays. A lot of people wouldn't even have played with that kind of injury. They would have no, for sure. out. high ankle sprain. Yeah. yeah that's going to sit a lot of people out. Right. That's going to sit so many people out. And he played with that through most of the playoffs, I think. Right. Yeah. 
in yeah. the whole Super Bowl. So that was exciting to watch. I mean, they were down by what ten points going into the half. I think somewhere. Uh, yeah, something there. maybe even more. I don't. It was a I'd lead. Have to look. It yeah. was at least a two score lead. Yeah, it was. So it was definitely when two you scores. go to halftime in the Super Bowl and you're down, like that takes a lot of battling through adversity oh, 100%. and that sort of thing to come and the big, back. So the biggest stage of them all. The and biggest you're down. stage. You've worked your whole life for that. Like most yeah. of those players never have been. They've never even made it that way through the. Look at Juju. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I'm a big Juju fan. I like Juju too. So I was very it's happy. It's bittersweet. Yeah, it, it's bittersweet. It is. I was, you got I was to be very happy, happy for him. him. I, I mean, that's a bit like sports are a business. I mean, he had to go where he was going to make a little bit of money, where he would have a chance at winning a Super Bowl. What I do respect about him is he had that opportunity two years ago, and he wanted to stay with Big Ben. So, yeah, yeah, no, I get I that. Mean, he he wanted to ride out with Big Ben, right? So and to that speak, was cool. And I mean, we got to see that play out and. That was a rough evening for me when Big Ben was saying, "Yeah, the you're fans not wrong. I think that was field. that definitely was. But, yeah, but I think for me, and I think a lot of, I think I speak for a lot of people that watch the NFL, watch the Super Bowl, and you know follow it relatively closely. That I think Jalen Hurts opened a lot of eyes and gave I think so. a ton of respect. One hundred percent. I'm pretty sure he had four total touchdowns. Yeah, I'm pretty. Pretty sure it might have only been three, but I think he rushed for three, and three and they for were one, playing against a great defense too. Yeah, yeah. So, well, Kansas and both of them were go- great. Both of them really going good. in were like really like competitive on both sides of the ball. So you can yeah, say that no, for it both was. Teams. It, I mean, it was everything you wanted that game to be. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be overshadowed obviously by that late holding call, which right. if you ask me, it was holding. I the, think it was holding. The cornerback himself said it was holding. Right. If the guy. If he admitted to it, then yeah. there's no argument there. Yeah. And when you see it from a different view, he literally had to like turn around and he had his arm around him, basically. So that's a holding call, in my yeah, opinion. Yeah, pretty much. And I'm not a ref. A, a but... lot of people argue, I, and here's lack of understanding of the game, I guess. Everyone's like, well, it wasn't a catchable ball. Well, it wasn't called pass interference. Right. If it's holding, it doesn't matter if the ball is catchable because it's before the ball is thrown. Yep. If it's pass interference, then you can argue right. that. Right. It was before the ball was Which, thrown. And, he, and that's not even really an argument because he caught the ball, turned, and made a football play. He made steps and all that. So what are you going to do? Yeah. I don't yeah. know. It, but all in all, I think I definitely think it was one of the best Super Bowls in a while. Yeah. Um, I know, don't know. High like, scoring? It was high scoring. It was competitive. There wasn't a point in the game where I feel like one team was showing a lot more than the other team. I can agree Just with that. Just from like I can agree with that. Be, from an unbiased point of view, like I said, I really didn't have a horse in the race here. Yeah. So I just watched the game for what it was. Um, you know, it went down to seconds. I think Kansas City played the clock really good at the end. Yeah, they they definitely did. And they had they went to kick the field goal. Isaiah so. Pacheco was running like a madman in that game. He was yeah. running angry. He. Which he's gonna be to. something. He's gonna you be something. To, as the, a rookie, it's the grandest stage of them all. Like, you yeah, gotta, as a rookie, you gotta he, show up. He showed up in the big stage for yeah. sure. But yeah, no, it was it was a good game. It lived up to a lot of the hype. The one thing I think that surprised me of all, and I think, I don't know if it really is talked about too much, is the fact that the Eagles, by and large, were the number one team to sack the quarterback all mm-hmm. season. They didn't get a single sack on Patty right. Mahomes. I just saw that. Which is crazy. And, you know, maybe that's why they were able to move the ball so well is because they weren't getting to Patrick yeah. Mahomes, you know. And I don't know, some people can argue. extend the play a little bit more. Yeah, some, not pe- that pressure. some people are going to argue, you know, maybe that defensive line made those cornerbacks look a little better. Uh, more Bradbury than yeah. Darius Slay because uh, Darius Slay's freaking elite. But. That's besides the point. Yeah, it was yeah. a good game. I enjoyed the I game. I think anybody that I, watched that and is a fan of football can respect both teams. I mean, they went in there, played their heart out. Like I said, I, I really wasn't a fan of Kansas City, but I gained a respect for especially the quarterback there. I mean, he was injured the whole way through the playoffs. Like, that's a champion. Like, he deserved to hold that Lombardi trophy up high. Oh, and the MVP. Yeah, the MVP. MVP too. I wasn't even thinking. I mean, he literally battled through an injury. Yeah, and, and he and, was running the ball down the field. Like you know, he was like going through so much pain there. Like you can oh, one hundred percent. You can 100%. just tell by the look on his face. Like you had that voice in the back of your head saying, "I'm gonna quit. I can't yeah. do this." And yep. he battled through it and like 
What a story. Yeah, no. They it, might make a movie about that Super Bowl someday. Uh, that, it'll be that might good, be a stretch. It'll be that in a 30 a for 30 documentary. It's about Patrick Mahomes sure. or Jalen Hurts or something. Or the Kelsey brothers. You know, Kelsey the brothers, Kelsey that was a big story. Yeah, it definitely was. How it cool was, is that, man? Bro, it was... Uh, they got a podcast. You ever watch any of their podcasts? I just, so on TikTok, I watched the highlight of it. It's a good podcast. Bro, they got a, they got, I, I love listening and to And they both podcast. have a good voice for it, too. Yeah, they it's do. Really, it's they a really do. entertaining podcast. Yeah, but uh, and Jason got emotional, you know, yeah. talking about like... I saw that part. You know, like their mom was on cloud nine. You right. know what I mean? She had all the attention because it was her two you sons think, like, battling it out. Yeah. And like, you know... I, I can't imagine how hard, how the mom, how their mom's got to feel because like in one aspect, like your child just won the Super Bowl. Your other one like, lost though. Yeah, but exactly. But I feel like if you're like a good brother and you're a good mom and a good family, like, yeah, you're going to be bummed out. But I think the overshadowing of being happy for your brother is going to kind of outweigh that. Yeah. Like, you, like, especially with them guys, like they had to have grown up their whole life playing football with each other. And they both had the work ethic and the dream to be able to play at a high level. And that's the ultimate goal is to win the Super Bowl. So Yeah, and, and I mean, I don't have a brother. Yeah. Um, but like you do. Imagine getting to play against right. Carter in the World Series. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you like know that what would I be mean? that would be like, cool. Like that's what you dream of as a kid. How many times do you draw up scenarios? Right. And you're you... in the backyard playing around with them, like you're pitching soft toss to and you're going, All right, bases are loaded. Yeah. And you play that scenario and then yep. like it happens for real. Yeah. It's... Like them guys are probably playing catch in the backyard, you know, juking each other out playing, saying they're in the Super Bowl, you know. Yeah. It's crazy, man. You know, later in life they here they are. They they made it, you know. I they think that it. I think that's really cool. I th- yeah, I think that's that's what it's all about, you know. I mean, yeah. in the end, they all started out as kids that had the big dream of getting there. You know, everyone that played in it, you know, that was their big goal: get yeah. to the Super Bowl, play football, do what they love. You know, they did it, and you know, anybody that wins makes it that far. Right. Like, there's bad players in the NFL. You can say that, but like, they made it to the NFL. How many people didn't? Right. A lot more than what mm, made it. A lot. And more. that's a part of the game too. You gotta there's gotta be a winner, there's gotta be a loser, yep. there's gotta be a player that outshines the other. Yeah. But at the end of the day you're a collective, you're a team. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah, yeah that was good. Yeah, no, I also because the Chiefs won, I got I won the competition against Riley. Oh yeah, that's right. So I was um so no I was dinner. very happy. You no, have to, she has she to get you dinner. Gets me okay. dinner. Which is yeah, that's sick. I'm so where, where's the dinner gonna be? I haven't decided. So yet. when you guys went out for Valentine's Day, so she paid. I'll get into that a little later. But okay. we didn't go out. Uh, well, we might as well just transition. I guess we can. I guess now. we can. Because yeah. I feel like if you don't have anything else to say about the Super I don't Bowl, really. I mean, that was basically really. my takeaway. I mean, yeah, it was a good game. Yeah, but anyway, Valentine's forward. Day. You know, um, I think it's a slightly commercial holiday. Not slightly. It's definitely a commercial holiday. Yeah, but. I think it's also something you kind of have to respect in the way of it's it's a time to focus in on the one you love. And I think you can expand that into the people that you love. Right, like family. And I was yeah. just going to add to that. Like, it doesn't have to just be a woman that you're, you know. Into. Yeah, so, <laughs> someone that you're in love with and stuff right. like that. Um, so I'm not always like the biggest fan, but I'm always the one. I'm I'm not. You got to do it for the woman. Yeah, really. pretty much. I mean, don't pretty cancel much. me, please. <laughs> yeah. like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's no. more like for the woman than the man. And it is just I mean, like the like, as much as you hate it, like if you didn't get him anything because like you're like, oh, let's not do anything for Valentine. Like, then they're like they're still going to be slightly on, upset because right. like you're they're kind of testing you. A little yeah, you're going to see everybody well, else getting get stuff for Valentine's Day. That's like the worst thing ever. So I haven't been in a relationship for like two and a half years. <laughs> so like the whole Valentine's Day thing to me, I just forgot about it. I'd have been your Valentine. I woke up on Tuesday morning and all I see on my Snapchat stories <laughs> is just like couple pictures. I'm like, what's yep. going on? All man? over the place. That yeah. was all my Snapchat and stuff. I know. Like. I just stayed off social media. I just couldn't take it. Yeah, that's the... Because it's like kind of ridiculous, but whatever man where'd yeah, you guys go have so a good we, evening we didn't go anywhere okay i uh i respect that she came over to my place um and i cooked us up a nice a nice meal that's what i'm talking I about i made uh i made some chicken parm there we go you know yeah and uh well let me start with she is the biggest fan of fried pickles 
Really? Fried pickles. She okay. goes crazy for them. I never would she have expected them. that. Honestly. Yeah, no. I, but I she don't either. have much to say all the time. Yeah, so, that's like, also what, true. What do I expect? <laughs> yeah. You know? um, yeah, so I... Uh, I don't like pickles that much. I'm starting to like them. I got to oh, okay, let me put see, it there. I love pickles. I'm starting I can get, to like pickles. I can pickles. get pickles in a jar and just eat them with a fork. I'm starting love to like them. I'm starting to like them. Um, you know, now I eat them on my Chick-fil-A sandwich, which is There a, was a time where you did. Uh, the whole until about Bro. until like 2 <laughs> oh, months ago. Stop. I either said no pickle or I got them and said, "Hey, who want if I was eating yeah, this, I like, gave wants the, the pickles. Who wants my pickles? Dude, I get extra pickles and I put mayonnaise no. on them. Okay. The, back. the mayonnaise you got to do with. Speaking of Chick-fil-A real quick, game-changing hack, okay? Uh-oh. Just get a chicken sandwich. Just the classic. Yeah, just the regular okay. chicken sandwich, okay? Take it out of the bun. Put the chicken back in the bag that it comes in. Dump in a Polynesian sauce mm. and a Chick-fil-A sauce and, and shake it up. It up. Oh. Slide it back out, drop it on the bun. Let me tell you, I discovered that in college because Chick Fil A was right there. Chick Fil A was on campus. Yep. And I'll tell you what, it's a game changer. It, Is it? it, it See, it's really good. Those sauces mix together. So I never well. mix the two sauces. I like both of them separately. Yeah, you got to mix. So them. when I do a Chick Fil A sandwich, I always put mayonnaise on it. But a couple weeks ago, I discovered they have a cheese sauce now. Do they really? Yeah. I don't so know. So I, I got that. the cheese sauce and I dumped it on the Chick Fil A sandwich. It just didn't hit different. Like it it's hit. just too, like, um, I would say mild of a flavor. Oh, I got you. It doesn't. So it doesn't you don't pop. get that like tang to it. Oh uh, yeah. So See like, that because the Polynesians got the tang. Right. And the, then you put and like the, the uh, nice like. Chick Fil A like sauce the has Chick Fil A sauce. You get like yeah. the honey mustard taste or whatever yeah, the aftertaste taste. It's, it's is. like a honey mustard barbecue kind okay. of blend, in a, however you want to describe it. Okay, it's heaven on a chicken sandwich. I'll have to give that a try. Yeah, but back to Valentine's okay, Day. Okay, Valentine's Day. I got, Day I got distracted. Chick Fil A. So you made her chicken place. parm. Yeah, made her chicken parm. Get her like a gift or anything. Um. Yeah. Well, I wasn't going to because I was making dinner. I thought like right. Like you even... don't want to go overkill. You guys have been dating like half your life. So, yeah, it like, feels like it. enough enough. Yeah, it's been over. It's been over seven <laughs> years, dude. It's I'm been kidding, over seven Riley. Years. It was a joke. Yeah. Um, <laughs> she does watch this. I think. I know. I, I'm like she was a fan. I was surprised. I didn't okay. think she I'm did like it. stepping on eggshells right now. Not nah, trying to say good. too much. Nah, you're she good. She might you're... come and beat me up or something. She can, bro. She's scary. Yeah. She's scary for a little person. I'll tell you that. Well, I'm in trouble now. I'm happy but, I don't got to deal with that. Yeah. Um, Anywho. <laughs> but yeah, no, made chicken parm. You know, I put the put the sauce on, breaded it up nice, fried it, and then I put the sauce on top. I got fresh mozzarella so that it tastes better. Did you like... <laughs> well, no, like chunked it up. Okay. And then put it on spots, and then I put shredded mozzarella mm, on top of okay, that. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, so yep. it was, it like was the, good. The it was good. I'll, show you a pic- I'll show you a picture later. Okay. Um, And then I whipped up some Alfredo. Man, you, know, you just, really went all well, out. Well, here's the thing. She likes chicken parm, but she likes Alfredo more than spaghetti. So, okay. a lot of times when you so do you chicken... So, you didn't use red sauce then? No, I didn't. You used... Because it's the best of both worlds for okay. her. Okay. I've never tried... It's always red sauce for me. Yeah, see, and, and it was a little different, but I'm I can sure. say it was pretty good. Like, that's how the Cheesecake Something Factory does it. Cheesecake Factory does it okay. that way. Um, But yeah, no. So, I whipped up some, you know, got the penne, you know. One of the best noodles ever, but got the penne, Alfredo, made my own Alfredo sauce. You know, I didn't buy that <laughs> ragu jar, God. dump it in. Nah, so you started this up. by saying you didn't do anything for Valentine's Day. And now you're, you might as well tell me you made the noodles at this point. No, nah, I didn't make the noodles, but I, I, I didn't make dessert too. Well, I, I bought breadsticks. Okay? okay. I bought the yeah, breadsticks. Like, that's time. I wasn't going to make, I wasn't yeah, going to make At that point them. in time, it's a Tuesday night. Yeah. Texas get toast, garlic breadsticks, shout max out. three hours to cook. Yeah. So, yeah. so then, you know, we had a nice meal, you know, she enjoyed her fried pickles and I got way too big pieces of chicken though. I bought not even looking. I just kind of like, Oh, these look all right. Grabbed them. They were each a pound. That's a big chicken. They, bro, they were enormous. Once you pound them flat, because yeah. that's how you got to do it, bro, they were giant. I'm sure they, they were. were. Giant. She ate like half of it. I ate like half of it with the pasta and well, stuff on the side. she had leftovers for Yeah, no, she definitely, she did, and it worked out. And then I even made dessert. I made molten lava cakes for dessert. Did you? Yeah, dude, they were. <laughs> did you make them from scratch or did you go by the <laughs> bro, box? From scratch, them? dude. Um, they're, bro, I they're call, not even hard I to make. Cap. They're not even, yeah. 
<laughs> Riley, I need you to call Colton. Yeah, put in the comment section, this. Riley. If yeah, you, drop a comment. The, now he's calling Cap. Nah, continue. they were made. We got those little ramekin things at my house. Okay. Oh, you got it. They're actually really easy to make. I'm sure they are. I mean, it's, what is it? Just cake batter? No, there's no cake batter involved at all. All right, hear me out. You take some like bittersweet chocolate. Yeah. You know, I think it's around like 60% cocoa or cacao, whatever the heck you want to say. Mm-hmm. Um, chop it up a little bit. Melt it in with like half a stick of butter. Okay, this is, I made two of them, so like, no, I didn't want to make extras. Yeah. And then you take an egg and one egg yolk. Okay, yeah, Combine so you're those. making cake batter. Kind of, yeah. And then just a little bit of flour. Yep. I'm, mix it all up. I got put you. Put some flour in that ramekin. Toss it in. Pour the batter in. You know, you it's go. all nice. Make sure it's nice and smooth. No lumps. And then uh, put them in the oven for like 10 minutes. You know, and then as soon as they come out, flip them bad boys over, wait Boom. like 30 seconds, yeah. cut it, and it oozes everywhere. Man. Okay, enough about you, more about me. Guess what I did on Valentine's Day? Um. So I <laughs> sat and watched the Rocky movies the whole way through. I do remember you telling and like, me you did bro, that. Bro, <laughs> they hit different. Bro, I, I, how, did you watch all of them? I watched from Rocky 1 the whole way until like the 2006 Oh remaster or like recreation of Rocky and it's oh called Rocky God. Balboa. Oh my and God. And like those movies are great because the moral and like the values they try to like mm-hmm. put out are really good, but man, yeah. they're cringe. Like yeah. even the newer ones, the acting's horrible and it's like really cheesy because like obviously they were made in like the late seventies into the eighties into the nineties. Mm-hmm. But when they did like the recreation of it in 2006, they tried to like keep it the same vibe. Yep. And it just did not work out very good. Yeah. But I, I've never sat down and just watched them whole way through. I've seen them all. But yeah. Never, but like, it's been like bits and pieces. Yeah. It. Well, not even like bits and pieces, but like yeah. I've seen the first one, I've seen the second one, I've seen the third. So why I did this is because we started reading the David Goggins books. Oh, yes, we did. And he talks about in round 14 when he Rocky got up, Apollo Creed knocked him out. <laughs> and everybody's saying, Rocky, stay down. Don't get up. And he got up and Apollo Creed's like, dude, I'm not going to beat the this heck? guy. Yeah, like this guy's built. So different. I was like, I'm just going to watch him because it was like one of those things. I've seen them all before, but it's been so long. Mm-hmm. And I never just sat and like watched one the whole way through. Yeah. So that's what I did on Valentine's Day, and it was a lot of fun. I mean, that was a lot of footage to consume. Yeah, and I was like doing you, things. Were you off like, that day? Yeah, I was oh, okay. like working okay. on like the truck pulling stuff and oh, all I that, like okay. while I was watching them. And there was times where like it got so cringe that I like fast forwarded like a couple minutes, <laughs> skip through it a little. So, bit. So you know, it's six movies, but I got through them like really quick. Cause I kind of like skimmed through like, oh, if, okay. I, so you didn't sit if there I saw watch... a scene before or something, I just went through it. You didn't sit there and watch 12 to 15 right. hours or so of movies. Dude, <laughs> some of them are pretty long. The first yeah, one's are. only like an hour long. They are. Though, I so. want to see the new, the I've never, I haven't seen any of the Creed movies that so, came out. I haven't seen any of them. That's why the I'm third excited. one's coming out. So I've never seen the, the Creed movies at all. Oh, bro, let's just watch them together. So I need to watch one, two, and then the third one's coming out in a couple weeks. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. So, I, I need to watch the first few first. Yeah, that's so going to be it. sick. Let's We're going to have together. to do it, and then we'll review them on we the got, podcast. We got someday. a good fight night, a couple good fight nights coming up. Dude. The Jake Paul fight. We could set the mood by watching Creed, Creed yeah. and then watch Jake Paul box. Are we comparing Jake Paul to no, Jake Paul's garbage. Creed or Rocky Balboa? No. Tyson? Well, the funny Tyson. part is Fury's Jake Paul's going to win. No, Fury's Jake Paul's not going to win. Out. It's Fury's honestly not even going to go the distance, I don't think. No, because Fury's going to knock him out in round three. I think the only reason that that people are even saying Tommy Fury has a chance is because his brother, yeah, but Tommy you watch Fury's videos a... of him. He has like really clean combinations. He has yeah. a really like hard jab that he's like knocked people out with a jab or at least mm. wobbled on the death. But Jake Paul, you know, I feel like you're, he's going to win. You're a big Jake Paul guy. So my thing is Jake Paul's not doing this to become a championship boxer. So he's not going to fight people that he thinks he can lose to. Yeah. That's the other thing. Like, like so, that's, that's the one thing that bugs me about it. Like, yeah, like it is cool. And it, and it kind of, in a way is putting boxing back on the map, so to speak. Right. Because we wouldn't be even be talking about no. boxing right now because UFC yeah. has been like the main fighting sport since we've been alive, really. Yeah. Pretty or, much. Like or, the majority of yeah, it. Yeah. A lot of our life, a lot of our life. But yeah, no, I, I, I see what he's doing and it just irritates me in a way. Like yeah. I respect it because I would never get in the boxing ring with any caliber of guy that he's getting in there with but at the same time like he's not fighting anybody that is like 
he has a chance to lose to. Right. My thing with Jake Paul is I think he's going to fight Tommy Fury because everybody's been saying you haven't fought a boxer yet. Yeah. So he needs to fight Tommy Fury. If he wins, I feel like he has to continually like step the game up fighting boxers now. Like there's no more going and like fighting the washed up MMA fighter. Yeah, no, you like, definitely can't. You definitely. And that's so when I, that's my thing. When I see him beat, like if he beats Tommy Fury, I, I respect him. Right. You know, he, he's gained it. You know, I feel I've, like it's I've a watched tough most fight. of his fights. Yeah. I've watched, we've watched a lot of his fights. I went to one of his fights. I know you did. I know and you it was did. like, still to this day, the best sport atmosphere I've ever like I'm been sure, in dude. in my life. Like, <clears throat> it's just a different kind of sport. Like, you know, if you go to a football game, a hockey game, a baseball game, obviously the fans are into it. They're passionate. But when you're at a fight, it's a whole other like level of energy it's crazy dude. yeah yeah no we've talked about trying to go to a ufc fight yeah. sometime going up to like i think that would be msg sick. or something go up the madison square garden we have yeah. friends that live out there so we could easily try to get the yep. new york yeah fight. no i th- i think we need to do it sometime just to say we did it right because like we're we're pretty big fans like i think of we it. need to wait until like mcgregor comes back oh, or dude, like a I super can't fight wait like, well he's gonna fight or no not a fu- well he is gonna fight at the end of it but he's doing ultimate fighter ultimate fighter and michael, michael chandler. chandler what do you think about that i so originally i was like this is gonna be awesome but then the more i sat there and thought about it and i talked to my buddy ryan who is also a pretty big ufc guy yeah. he has been for a while you know has michael chandler really earned that fight he came uh, think think about this for a second. Yeah, okay? but explain yourself and then I'll get my Cuz I I like Michael Chandler. I think he's a hard-hitting dude. I he's, think he could He's be. entertaining to watch. He's entertaining. Least. But his record he has what? Maybe one I think he has one win since he came to the UFC. That first one where he did the backflip off the cage when he Yeah. Won. Did he and Poirier beat Chandler? Poirier beat him. Yeah. He faced Oliveira. Oliveira beat him. Like he he hasn't won since that first UFC f- fight. Right. I feel like Connor's in the same boat, though. What, yeah, Connor's well, on a what a three fight losing streak. It's or something like fight. that, but at the same time, like Connor, Connor's never going to go back to what he was. Like no. he had that big injury, like right, and nobody's ever the same after a big injury. No, but at look the at same... Anderson Silva. He went yeah. through the same thing. He came back and he was washed. Yeah, my thing with McGregor is he's still, in my opinion, is one of the best stand up strikers in the. He sport. is, and th- and that's what's going to make him fighting Chandler good is Chandler's right. and also it's, it's very good. It's the same stand-up. old song and dance with Conor McGregor. So you have Conor who without a doubt, in my opinion is still probably one of the best strikers in the lightweight division. And then you have Chandler who's saying, I'm going to get him on his back. I'm going to wrestle him. He's not going to be able to stand up. I'm going to get him on the ground. So it's like, that's how every Conor McGregor fight goes. Yeah. That, that's the formula so to beat him. That's the formula to beat him. If he can do it, I don't know. Because like you said, how many wins has he had in the UFC? At least I think the first one he won for sure. He might have one. He might one. have a, another one. So but he's but got he a losing, a, he's got a losing record in the right, UFC. And he lost a Poirier and they were just standing up brawling. That was a really entertaining fight. Yeah, that was fight. a good It was one. a they three round swinging. fight and they did they not were leave swinging. on at all. Um, which to me shows for one, he kind of has a chin on him. Yeah. Oh, but he definitely McGregor does. McGregor is a different kind of striker than Poirier. He's a, a southpaw. Way. He's got the heavy left hand. Mm-hmm. He's fast. I feel like. Yeah. But the problem is, th- how much ring rust is there? There's Chandler's a lost a lot of fights, but he's been active. He's yeah. been fighting at you know every. I mean, it's been four or five months. He's had a fight since he's come to the UFC. In today's times, that's a pretty quick turnaround rate to be able to fight. Yeah, but definitely. McGregor's been out for what over a year now. Uh, it's so gotta it's be. Like, it's gotta be almost a year and a half. Yeah, I can't. I feel like last November is when he fought, or maybe it was last January when he fought because he fought Poirier twice in a row. Yeah, and the second one he broke his leg. Your right. wife is in me DMs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I think it's a good return fight. For McGregor I think so. because and you can't put him up against Islam. No. It's Islam's gonna murder McGregor. I think Islam's, Islam's better than anybody right now. Yeah, well, I, mean, I don't he think just there's beat, a guy uh, that can beat him. He just beat uh, what's his name? I'm Alexander gonna... Volk. Yeah, I can't I'll, say, I'll his, say last his last name. name wrong. I'll say his last name. Yeah, wrong. I know, but, dude. What a fight that was. That was a good fight. What a fight that was. That, so a lot of people say it could have went either way, and there was a lot of people upset about the decision, which yeah. I feel like has been a theme a lot in the UFC the past yeah. couple of big fights. That I, people were like really torn on how it could have went, which I feel like you're gonna have that. You have the passionate fans, but I don't know. I think like the one that definitely was like okay was the Sugar Sean fight. 
I thought that he got his butt kicked. Really? And they called that he won. So I don't know. But you think, like, he can't fight Islam. You don't want to do Poirier again. Because no. that's, like, the third time in a row. And who else is the top lightweights right now that you can match him up with? I mean, Oliveira's still up there. Oliveira's up there, but Oliveira is on another level, I think. I think he's still a yeah, title he's contender. Still, yeah, he's still. He's going to come a, back actually, and probably fight for the title again. A lot of people don't like him, but I'm a big fan. I don't like, I I'm didn't like him fan. after the weight cut incident. Oh, uh, yeah. I think if you're the champion, it's your obligation to make sure that you're the correct weight. Yeah, and, and, I, train and I get that, but I don't think that's enough to make me dislike him. Yeah. Like, it wasn't like he was, uh, who the heck was a guy that was like 10 pounds? Oh, who was uh, that? It was a pretty well-known guy, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. And he was, like, I'm bad with smiling names. about I'm bad. it. Yeah, no, it's there's like, so it's like you didn't even care. Now. I feel like there's a fight on every weekend. There's good fights almost every weekend. Yeah. Um, so I think that's the correct fight to make. They're going to build it up through the Ultimate Fighter. They're going to face off probably by the end of the year, I would think. Yeah, I, I don't know if they've set a date yet or not. They just yeah, said that they're going to face off at the fight. end. No, but they, they did but say that's they're going to face off at the end. what happens with the Ultimate Fighter. The coaches coach the two teams and then they fight at the yeah, end. Yeah, no, they def- so. they already did come out and say that they are going to fight at the end. So that yeah. is confirmed dates and anything like that to be determined. I think it's going to be awesome, dude. I think it's going to be a good fight. I don't know where it's going to go, though. I want to root for McGregor. Like, I've had a lot of fond memories watching him oh, just dude, demolish yeah, people. For sure. The think that that was seven years ago when he won when he was consistently beating those guys yeah, it's mind it's, it's a while dude. ago dude it's that a was while 2016 ago. yeah it's it's been that's it's crazy. been a long time so it's been a long time i don't know but michael chandler i mean he's got power he's got the experience he's been fighting actively so it's gonna be good yeah it's i'm, gonna be I'm really excited good. for it i'm excited for it you know what else i'm excited for is warm freaking weather i dude. know dude Bro, pennsylvania weather it's crazy, if you, bro. If you're not in Pennsylvania and you're listening to this or watching and you've never been to Pennsylvania, don't come. Just yeah. like when I say, and I'm sure there's other places around like this, but this is a yearly thing. It was 74 degrees Literally the like other day. Literally summer. Like Sun's two day, out. Two days ago it was 74 Sun's degrees. Sun's out. Windows down in the car. Yeah. Bro, Taylor I, Swift bumping. Uh, I wasn't bumping Arm out T-Swift. the window. But I, I had the, thing, I had the arm out the window. I was I, was, then, I was driving, you know. Yeah. But I didn't have the no or- Taylor Swift though. No, what's I'm not. Your, a- what's your like good vibes music? Morgan Wallen. Okay. Morgan Wallen. I get the Taylor Swift was kind of a joke, but I was bumping her the other I day. I know you are. We when we went into the um, the pirate game, we bumped T Swift. We did a dude. couple times. Pirates are coming back. I know. Spring training know just started. Are. The pitchers. It's crazy Monday, to think. the it's other crazy. players start training. Yeah. It's going to be good. McCutcheon is back McCutcheon's in Pittsburgh. back, which I'm not sold on it. I, I think that was a very good marketing tactic. It was. If and he I think that's over 200, that's still to be determined. Now, th- when you look at his average over the past few years, it's still not bad. I don't For have, the Pirates. I don't have numbers not. in front of me. Yeah, no, I, I mean, he he's batted gonna, like maybe 167, was, maybe the past couple years. What, like, he's been that, like. What are you talking about? His average has been. Way I above don't that. Think, dude. Way above that. I don't think. Way above that. Look it up. It Look up. it up. Look it up. But yeah, Keep no, I'm excited for that. I'm excited for that. It's hard to be excited for warm weather baseball when it is 25 degrees outside. I know, dude. 75 I two days ago. Tickets 25. For opening day. Did you really? I've never been to opening day. I've never been. What day either. is it? It's April 7th. Now the bad part is I wanted to take all the boys, but you cannot get tickets that are like together uh, because they're almost all sold out. So I'm taking yeah. my mom and my brother with me. Oh, there you go. That'll be yeah, fun. It'll be a That'll good be time. Fun. That'll um, be fun. You'll enjoy that. It, I just think like McCutcheon's like an icon. That's the biggest thing. You is know what he, I mean? He is and a Pittsburgh he, legend. When he comes out on the field for the first time on opening day, that is going to be like something you'll remember forever. Oh, people are going to go absolutely crazy when that man next, comes dude. back out. I would be too. I'm going to jump excited. up on my couch. I think honestly, like I, I don't want to sit here and be like, oh, the Pirates are a playoff contender. I think they're going to be better. I think they're going to be better. I think they're definitely going to they, be better. They're not going to get a hundred losses this year if they can get I, their stuff together. I don't think they will either. Um, until I see some more, see what guys are looking like in spring training, but that doesn't. The really problem say with much. the Pirates is they always do good in spring training. They do. They lit it up in spring. They training. They hit home dude. runs. They look like the best team yep. in the league. And then yep. the first game, the first series happens, they like lose it. Then they lose the series after that, and their records like. Two and six by the yeah 
end of the yeah, first that's month. Right. That's about right. first couple weeks, I should say. Or they're either really good at the beginning, and then they just wet the bed. So his batting average last year was 277, yeah, which is a lot no, better that's his, than that's I his thought. Career, that's his oh, career that's his average. career? That's his career average. Okay, let's look last year. I, which I, 277 I, career average is better than I thought. Yeah, well, I mean, because, you got to think those few years with the Pirates, he was batting 300 plus right, multiple like years. Right, like 2015 and a couple years before that, I would say, yeah. right before he got traded, he yeah. was doing really good. But no, really I think good. I think it's a good move. There's like no Wi-Fi I'm, in here. Yeah, we're in like a steel box. Yeah, That's we're okay. it's getting cold in here too. We it is, I, bro. I can see my breath. Um, if there's any brand brands out there that want to endorse us and send some sponsorship money so we can get a studio or I, something, yeah. or at least a nice space heater, hit us up, bro. Hit us up in the comments. Yo, Find shout us out, on Instagram. Shout out, buddy. Buddy propane heaters, they keep me warm ice fishing, so they can keep yeah, me warm in go. here. It's like the same free, temperatures. Free advertising. What do you want us to do more? Um, yeah, I don't think we're going to find out what McCutcheon's batting averages have been. That's but right. honestly, I feel it's, like they're definitely better it's above than like 170. I want to say it's close I feel like, to like he's had a couple bad years. The problem is, you know, he played for Milwaukee last year, and then he played for the Phillies the year before. So he's getting put into different kinds of offenses yeah. where they want him to play a certain way. You know, there's a lot more strategy to the baseball that meets the eye. Oh, 100%. So, I mean, you can't really go off of that. I think what is going to light a fire under him is there's a lot of young players yeah, where he's going to come he's, in and kind of be like the mentor. He's the mentor. He's, he's going to come he's in. He's your and, old veteran presence. Yep. Yeah, and there's a lot of veteran presence on the Pirates this year. You got yeah. Rich Hill. Um, um, Carlos Santana. Carlos Santana. There's another oh, guy who's, oh, you know. They're speculating a lot because they're because of all the, speaking of baseball, all the baseball changes that are yeah, coming. Yeah, the shift. Yeah. And with that shift, his, they're thinking his average is going to go away because he gets destroyed by the shift. Yeah. So with the shift change, I don't know. He, he might not be bad. Happen. I don't know. I'm not the biggest. Like, I'm okay with the shift I am change too. thing. I mean, to me, it's like the shift as a whole, that's just a way to play the game. Yeah, kind of. Kind of, but it also ruins it a little bit yeah. too. When you have the third baseman basically – it's covering second, second and everybody else. Second you know, baseman is shallow, right? You feel right. Like that's just, then you're kind of saying, okay, well, if there's a lefty and he can't hit opposite field, then you're screwed. You're screwed. You're screwed. You're, and that's, and I think that affects batting average a little bit. I don't it know. Does Studies because, might say otherwise, but because the mindset of it too, it's like, oh, they're, you know, they shifted the whole way over to right field. Now I'm going to have to hit that. And if I don't get the right pitch, then I'm not going to hit opposite field. Yeah. You already have that in your head. So I don't know. It'll be interesting. I yeah. think the Pirates are looking good. I think the only thing that I would do if I was on the management is sign Trevor Bauer. That yeah, they can sign him for a league minimum right now. You definitely can. It's like seven hundred and twenty-five thousand. It's, it's gonna look ugly on the organization. That's the only but thing. The organization's already ugly. Yeah, and you know, what I mean, like people are already starting not to really care about the organization. Yeah, nobody. And he wasn't a acu- he was accused but he wasn't proven guilty enough. And yeah. So how do you screw a guy like that? He yeah. was proven innocent. He's a Cy Young winner. I don't know. I feel he's like a, a lot of times he's a great pitcher and that's what the Pirates need right now is a good starting rotation. I feel like so, sometimes sports are very I don't know. This this might be a bad take, but I don't I know what I don't you're going to so. say and I'll the, probably agree with you. I feel like a lot of times sports for the sheer publicity purposes of it are very much fans of, oh, well, you're not innocent until proven guilty. Yeah. You're just, oh, all these allegations are happening here. And you're going to be guilty brands, now. And they're worth billions of dollars. And and I get I, I do get it because there is a money factor, especially for those brands. Right. You think if, if the Pirates signed Trevor Bauer and, you know, a huge partnership that they have doesn't agree with that and they lose all that revenue from having a partnership with IC Light – if they say we're not going to have IC light at the ballpark anymore because of Trevor Bauer getting signed, that goes yep. against our that's, policies. And that's a big and thing. And you can't do that. I understand that. But I like Trevor Bauer. Spe- I like watching his YouTube videos. Speaking of icy light, when we went to the game late in the last year, I could not find an icy light in the ballpark. I'm not a big icy light guy, but if I go to you a just Pittsburgh think the, sporting the vibes event, are immaculate. When, yeah. If yeah. I go to a Steelers game, first I beer I drink, that. icy light. 
hockey so game. I think, light. I think the problem is when we walked around there, there wasn't a lot. Like, I wanted Dippin' Dots. Yeah. No Dippin' Dots. Well, but but even, we went to, like, the last, like, one of the last home games of the year. So, I yeah, feel like once they ran out of stuff. They weren't buying Especially more. when it was, like, a weekday series. It was. And it was we got the, middle pool of, holes. the beginning of October. It's cold out. Who's going to the Pirate game? Unless yeah. you're, like, a fan. And we wanted to go. We said. Well, we saw pool holes. Right. We wanted That's to why. see. We wanted to see his last, you know, regular season one of. stretch. Yeah, one, one of, of the last ones. The last series. Yeah. And he only batted, like, the first inning. and then they No, he had out. two at-bats. Did he? He had two at-bats. It must just not have been memorable. No, I, I don't think he got on base. Yeah, that was kind of Maybe he did game. once. Maybe he did once. I don't know. He at least got a single or something out of I it. I spent the entire time that game trying to make – not trying to make, but just – we were sitting behind the Cardinals dugout. Yeah, you were so trying I was, to. So I was trying to just. Get I was them all being that guy. Out. I was being that guy. And the people around me realized that because they were laughing every time I do right. it. Right. And like and the then, thing is, I'm just not that kind of guy. Like I have to be like in a different kind of like environment mm-hmm. for me to like do that. And I got a kick out of it. Yeah, dude. I had. But like nobody so cares either because that. it's like the Cardinals solidified playoff contention. Yeah. Like so they were going so, to the playoffs. The pirates had their hundredth loss by then. No, that was the hundredth loss. Oh, game. Was it? Yeah. We ended up losing, but we were <laughs> so up we big history. early. So the whole game, like the whole time, you know, they, they do something bad. And I thought this was a playoff team. <laughs> yeah. You're losing yeah. to the hundred loss pirates, this and that the and whole time. <laughs> and then they ended up beating us late. Like they, we gave up, excited, we had like a seven man. run lead. It was ugly. Yeah. Was ugly. And then they went the overtime. They went to extra innings. Yeah. Yeah. No. And that's when, I don't know. It that's was like, it, it was like eighth downhill. or ninth inning. But Whenever with that I find base runner on second, it's so easy to, I I mean, all you that. gotta do is I hate pop that. it out in the outfield and have a fast it. guy on second. I hate it. But no, I, I did achieve my goal that day, though, because late in the game, a fan in front of us turned around and told me to shut the F yeah. up. What's going to be fun <laughs> is is if we go to some games and the Pirates are actually looking good. Oh, I can't wait. It's going to be hype, dude. I can't wait. Opening day is going to be fun. The problem is I just got the tickets last week, mm-hmm. so everything in like the lower sections was sold out. Oh, So we are literally sure. in the nosebleeds, the, but I don't even care, man. At like, that park, like it's not – I've sat up. Literally against the fence. Right, and it's not it's horrible. Fine. It's fine. It's not bad, but I'm sure we're going to go to some games this summer and we'll we get definitely better seats. Will. I would we like to see will. the Mets play. I would love to see the Mets. I actually like the Mets. I love the Mets, dude. I like, I like Pete Alonzo from Cisco Lindor. Polar Bear. Yeah, Jeff McNeil, I like Starling the... Marte. Like, they have a great team. Yeah. Yeah, I, They just I like signed Verlander, right? Oh, yeah, I think so. so. I think so, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be a good team this year. Yeah, no, I'm down to go to some they games. They took the still, playoffs last year. Yeah, they did. I'm I'm still looking to go to a couple Pens games this yeah, season. Still. There's I haven't still been to one left. yet. Yeah, no, I mean it, it was just the All Star break, so we're about halfway. Maybe yeah. maybe a third of the, I would say right. like a third of the season left. So I need to get to a game. I haven't yet, but we'll get there. We'll get. Life there. goes on either way. Life goes on. I've went to one Pens game this year. One. That's they not lost. Bad. Um, oh. I actually got up to get some popcorn with Jet when they were like, we thought the game was over. Mm-hmm. Forget who they are. I think they might have been playing like Carolina or something. That and they came game. back in like the last seconds and won. Really? And we were like standing there, like in line for popcorn. Like, what happened? Like, why is everybody yeah. leaving? Like, it happened so quick. Because we thought it was actually tied. We thought they were going to go, you know, play it out. And then they scored at the last couple of seconds. The game was over. So Last game I went to, I went with – um I have another buddy named Colton okay. and I had student rush tickets. So I was like, ah, oh, you know, do you want to go? Then. Like it was cheap, $20 tickets, maybe 15. I don't know. Yeah. It was dirt cheap. So he said, yeah, we went. And I was like, I think it was last season. The devils were not good. The pens were pretty good. So I'm like, oh, I'll bet this is a perfect game to go to. You right, know, should a see, a, should see a win. Right. Should see a win. Um, we got in just a tad late. We missed like the first, Minute and a half. We were already down one nothing by the time we sat down. We proceeded to lose the game six to one. Uh, it picked was a bad game to brutal. Go it was brutal, but it I happens. Like, I have. It's been so long since I've been to a sporting event in Pittsburgh and watched the team win. I see. I'm the opposite. I see so many wins. I I've, I've never watched the Pirates win in person. Probably since like 2013, 14 when they were good. I've never watched them win in person since then. I've. Pens games, that was actually the first Pens loss I've ever been to, and I've been to six Pens games. I've been to a Pens playoff game, and they won. But every other game I've been to since then, they've lost every single time. I'm on a 
Well, no, I'm not on a cold streak. I'm like 500 at Steelers games. I've been to four. Okay, I've never two been wins, to a two wins, two losses. Game. Can you believe that? I've never been, dude. Uh, Colton's <laughs> going to his first Steeler game this year. We're gonna I'm have gonna to take go him because, like, I it just never has worked out. I don't know why. That blows me away, dude. That's, I know that's kind of crazy. It's it's such a cool atmosphere. Yeah, especially I'm sure it is. I've never like the game I went to this year. We played New England. It was before Kenny P. Yeah. So like the vibes weren't there. It didn't even feel like a Steelers game. Riley and I go every year. It's like our kind of like go, tradition. Yeah, it's like our we have our yearly game. Yeah. So it we're gonna have to hit didn't. one up next year. Oh, we one hundred percent can. Yeah. One hundred percent can. I I'm looking forward to it. We got a lot to look forward to here. Bro, we got a great year coming yeah, up. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I think like everything about it's gonna be awesome. We just I, got the schedule wait. out for Appalachian Outlaws pulling did series. You? Oh, I did see that. We got like thirteen we have thirteen shows that we're a part of this year. That's There's only a handful of them where it's like an Appalachian Outlaw show. Mm-hmm. But we got like the classes into some great tracks. It's gonna be a lot. That's of fun. awesome. We I'm just announced August fifth, Fishersville, Virginia. I did see that. Yeah, I did see big that. Big purses. I mean, the, the cool thing about that place is the location's so good. Where there's guys coming from Pennsylvania, New York, Ohio, yeah. Kentucky, I, North Carolina. I had never been to a truck pool, you know. And you asked me, I think it was two years ago. You know, you were, had a little merch tent, had some shirts yeah, and some like hats. Yeah, literally so. one of the first outlaw events ever. Yeah, and I was like, yeah, you know, I'll, I'd, I'd love to come help you sell stuff. And, dude, I had never been to a truck pulling event before, and I, like, I wasn't even really in a spot to watch. Yeah, and it, it's just it something was so different. Fun. It was so cool. Yeah. And, I've been to, I've been to, I think, two now. Yeah, because you went to the one that we did out in Freeport, I think. Yeah, I was at that one. That little event that we did for the South Buffalo Fire Department. Yeah. That was a good event. Yeah, that was awesome. I mean, you still have yet to be to one that's like, that like really shows off. Yeah, things. I'm excited. And what I want you to do this year is just come to one and hang yeah, out. Yeah, that's what I need to do. I, I tried to last year and the couple that I was going to, it just didn't fit into my schedule. Yeah. You know, but I... Yeah, it's summer, I, man. I'm going to compare it. I'm, I'm going to write one in on my calendar and go you know i got the problem my... is the one that i would love you to come to is the week you go on vacation usually it's like in the middle of june oh yeah that's so, a problem that's a problem yeah that one's just never worked out but it's fun i got noah helping me this year dude. he's gonna film and stuff oh, that's so sweet. we'll have that's a couple sweet. of the boys good there that yeah good dude. i'm excited to have him around it'll be a lot of fun but yeah it'll be nice i got my um my fishing tournament schedule as well. Yeah, so um, that's I gonna got, be going on. Yeah, I got eight events. Um, Where are s- they? Um, they're pretty much around PA and like this area, PA kind of West Virginia. Um, we got some at Yawk River Lake, okay. Cheat Lake, um, Tigert Lake. Um, oh, come on, what are some other ones? I'm drawing blanks right now. It's all good. Um. The there's one, there's one the up idea. at Erie. There's one up in. Is, there's one up at cool. Erie. That'll be a be fun able to one. Fish Lake Erie. Yeah, it's a full weekend thing, so it, it's two days. I don't that's know if awesome, it's. Dude. I don't know if it's gonna be separated. Yeah. But yeah, it's middle, mid early. I think it's the weekend after the fourth. Huh. We're going, so it'll be fun. Fish those. Fish a couple district tournaments. You know, see if we can string together a couple good performances. Maybe qualify for the national semis we'll see how that goes yeah we'll We'll see how that goes you might like be a multi-sport champion by the end of the summer that would be fun we're gonna be like two times we're winning softball (laughs) (laughs) two times baby you win the fishing tournament win the softball championship of the world ricky two time ricky two (laughs) (laughs) time that's what's gonna be on your jersey for next year ricky two time ricky two time i like it yeah I like that's it. exciting man yeah i'm i'm pretty i'm pretty pumped i got yeah, a, that's gonna be a lot of fun i'm looking a, forward to it we got a little meeting good. tomorrow going down you know meeting I, i've only met i only know like one or two people in this club and i think okay. there's like 20 guys well that'll so. be exciting meet new people that yeah you know, share a passion with you and yeah stuff. i'm excited because it I guess the biggest thing for me too is I'm going to learn a lot, you know, fishing with different people. Right. Like everybody has their little thing that they do that they think works best and yep. stuff. And you can kind of, you know, maybe not do it every single time, but at least get ideas in your head. Of yeah. And it, you can it's, try it's and... different ways to fish different structures, different, right. you know, and it's going to be different bodies of water, you know, so That's it's, really it's a lot of experience, you know, um, I'm probably going to, I'm definitely going to struggle, you know, because a lot of the, I fished a couple of the lakes before I've been up at Erie one time and it was 
my buddy Ryan and I went up and it was horrible. There was like five foot waves. It was, <laughs> it was brutal, yeah. dude. It was brutal, but I didn't catch anything. So I've yet to catch a fish on Erie. Um, but we fished a couple of the other lakes before we did a couple of tournaments last year. Um, so I'm pretty excited for it. I want to learn a lot. I'm going to be very, I'm going to be a sponge. Yeah. Just suck all I the feel like if you, anytime you do anything new, it's good to have that mentality. Yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to learn as much as I can, Yeah, you know? So, and, and for me too, it's part of, part of the fun of it, of it is going to be fishing different bodies of water. Yeah. You know, and I don't, I don't have a places. boat. I don't have a boat. So, you know, um, unless I'm going with my buddy Ryan on his boat, like I can't really fish places like that. Right. But fishing as a co-angler or ride or whatever you want to call it, it's going to allow me to, you know, I don't need a boat, but right. I can still get the full experience on the big lakes, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, that's sick, dude. I'm excited, man. I'm I'm really pumped. First that's event, sick. I think, is April 23rd. So that's soon. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's coming up, you know. Yeah, I guess, like, fishing as a whole is going to kick off in April. Yeah. So that's, like, two months from now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited. I think that's going to be – I'm going to try to do a little bit of fishing this year. Let's do it. I'll, let's go out sometime. Yeah, I never, like – I don't know. It's just something I've never really been interested in because I've always had so much going on, like my whole life in the summer, especially the truck pulling stuff. I mean, yeah, that, that takes, takes up, up a lot of your summer. A lot of the weekends, and with my dad and my uncle having the trucks, it's like we're going somewhere every weekend. Every weekend, pulling. man. But with the Appalachian Outlaw schedule this year, like it's kind of split up. So I'm gonna have a lot of free weekends to do new things and. Towards the end of the summer, do a little bit of scouting and that sort of thing. Get yeah. ready for archery season. I'm pumped for archery. Yeah. So far away, but I'm already so Dude, pumped. Dude, it's like seven months away. I'm going to, tomorrow morning, I'm going to go. My dad and I are going to go out and do a little small game hunting, rabbit, squirrel. Yeah, that's nice. Know. Um, And in the process, I have yet to pull down my cameras. So I'm going to pull those down. Pull them down, see what's going on. Yeah, I haven't checked them since I'm the season. I'm excited. I'm going to be hunting around the house a little bit. That's what's Do a up. little bit of like suburban hunting. Yeah. I mean, that's in what I want to call it because yeah, it's literally it just kind like of is. small patches. It's yeah. not big woods at all. Yeah. I'm, Maybe that's what you want to call it, just small patch. Yeah. hunting like yeah. i wouldn't call it like urban hunting <laughs> yeah because it's not it's but, not really this isn't really urban so but like speak. every spot i have or i hope to have i think i have at least an idea where i'm gonna be at mm -hmm. it's literally like i'm up in a tree and i can see houses yeah so yeah no and, which and is a totally different kind of hunting than i'm I've pretty gone. blessed with where i hunt at um i don't think anyone that i hunt with or anyone related you don't have might to, watch it but you don't have time, to like tell it tell us where it's at we no, gotta, uh, and yeah. that's a, like yeah, a side no, note like, we're gonna talk a lot of hunting on here and there's some things that we just got to keep under wraps oh, for y'all so when but, you see the big 200 inch box on the instagram page we're not telling you where that we're not even <laughs> telling you what state they're from so anyway uh, continue but no I'm, I'm really blessed um with where i hunt at it's it's a family-owned property um connections with my dad uh went to school um with one of the family members that's um, cool and and awesome people awesome awesome people we've hunted with them as long as i've hunted um and you know their mom was you know nice enough to let me archery hunt the property you know there's some stands already up that i've had access to hunt that some of the other guys yeah. have they let me use them you know and i i try to show my appreciation um sometimes i wish i could do a little more right um schedule doesn't always allow it but you know i try and maintain the stands do all that stuff you know i'm i'm very grateful for what i have because there's not a lot of pressure where i hunt yeah you know which makes it good yeah and weren't until, you saying before those guys don't even archery hunt a couple of them do a okay. couple of them do but still um, it's but like that's totally part, different no. ball game like around here there's not a whole lot of public hunting mm -hmm. but when you get on that stuff i mean there's other people hunting it obviously you got to worry about that you got to worry about literally everything that comes with that yeah. and even private property Yep. Like a lot of these private properties that I'm getting permission on, there's already people hunting it. Yep. So even though I got, you know, 30 acres of private property to hunt, there's mm -hmm. already two other guys hunting it. So how good is that really going to be? Yeah. And that's, and that's what I mean. I, I'm, I'm blessed. Like a lot of, there is some pressure come rifle season, you know, we do drives on it and stuff, but for the most part in archery season, it's, you know, there's a couple other guys that show up and like, by all means they can show up all they want. It's not my, yeah. it's not my land. You know what I mean? They do what they want. Um, and I'm blessed to have the opportunity to be out there. It's not my land. You know, they could tell me right. tomorrow, like, Hey, don't, don't go, don't go like hunt that's there anymore. The big thing we've, we've been scouting different areas of the state and that sort of thing. And 
you know, we've scoured a lot of the public stuff and it doesn't look great, but there's all like most of it's private that borders the game lands and stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's like, that's one of those things that it's like, man, it's kind of nerve wracking, like building yourself up to getting permission on something like that or not even getting permission, but asking, Yeah, you know what I mean? So, and you can get like, you hunt a pretty good chunk of land there so yeah, to it's, even it's have that opportunity because a lot of people hunt around here mm-hmm. a lot of people have family that hunts or yeah. a friend that hunts the property and you're not always gonna most of the time you're not gonna get permission on stuff that's just mm-hmm. how it kind of goes around here but. yeah yeah and I, and when i say i'm blessed like it's like they're not necessarily big deer all the time you know there are some big bucks running around for sure um but it's the fact that like every year i've had a chance at a buck yeah. in archery and or when multiple. When you go like, out, I feel like you see deer mostly every uh, sit. Almost every time I'm out. Yeah. This, this past season, I had one sit, and I, I hunted a lot this past this past yeah, year. Yeah, you hunted. A I hunted lot. a lot, and there was there was one time in archery season I didn't see a single deer. Yeah. <laughs> That's so awesome. It, it. At least that keeps you interested in it. You yeah, know, the deer absolutely. Moving through there, and it's something to watch. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yep. The only the only challenge is it's a lot of agriculture fields yeah uh, i don't know why so you're I said that weird. Of, but <laughs> we haven't said a lot of big words tonight no so we haven't build it's cold here. in here so my tongue stopped working cold yeah i know so let's speed this yeah. story up we're almost done anyway yeah. we're running yeah. out of time we got here. this and then we got to get into our top five okay foods. so let's wrap this up but yeah no it's a lot of agricultural fields so a lot of it is you know setting up on field edges stuff like right. that um, and like and with that, a lot of you it's gotta timing. worry about the wind, the timing, when yeah. the deer, you really it, have a to lot of times the deer. It, a lot of times it's hard to get out of the stand because yeah. where I have to get to. if they're out in the to, field or something and it's getting dark out, you don't want to be making yeah. all the ruckus getting out. Yeah, that's that's one thing I, I got to improve on for next year is, you know, placing stands where I'll have easy exit. Yeah. And no matter, it's, it's almost impossible where I'm at to get in and out without the chance Bumping of spooking over. deer. Yeah. But. You know, the fact that there's deer there, I'm not upset. You yeah. Know? But anyways, it's getting cold. Yeah. So, top five foods. We talked about it last yeah, week. Yeah, I feel like, for me, this is like, when I thought about this, I thought about if there was five things laid out on a plate, yep. this is my last meal ever, I'm being sent to die, like, what would I pick? Yeah. So, I'll let you go first. We'll go back and forth. Okay, so I had a very, very hard time with this. I didn't. Really? I literally didn't even think about it because... until now, but I'm so confident <laughs> that I know what I'm going to say. See, the problem is, like, I have foods in mind, but numbering them is my okay. issue. Um, I would have to say number five is a bacon cheeseburger. Fair bacon play. cheeseburger. Like, I could have went plain cheeseburger, but I like the bacon cheeseburger okay. that much more. Yeah, I do too. So, like, if, if I got five foods... I want one of them. Five to be is bacon good. cheeseburger. Yeah. So my five is ribs. Ribs, okay. Ribs, okay. So just a big old rack of ribs, baby back preferably. Um, sauce has to be right too. We talked about that last week. Yeah, sauce, sauce has, to, has be right. to be nailed. Um, I like them falling off the bone. I know, like the food critics are gonna say you don't want them just that tender. Oh no, that's how I want but it. But that's how I want. That's them. So I want that's it. my number five. So my number four. This is where we start to struggle even more. I struggle with okay. five. See, but I'm still good. I know what I'm I know what I'm getting into. I would have to say my number four is gonna be pulled pork. Okay, so you went the barbecue. I route. did go the barbecue. Route. You gotta have that. some sort of barbecue yeah. in there. And I think the classic barbecue is pulled pork. Pulled pork. I, I respect that. I not to toot my own horn, but I feel like I make a pretty mean pulled pork. So yeah. like it's just it's classic. You can do so many different things. Like with ribs. Like ribs are great. I thought about ribs. But you can only do so many things. Mm, you can cook them kind. so many different well, ways. Well, yeah, but like pulled pork. You can pork. do different sauces on it. You can season them differently. Yeah, but either way, when you're eating a rib, you're eating a rib. I feel the same way about pulled pork. Like I you guess can so. Put I di- guess you so. can put different you can put seasonings it on, a bun, on you it. Can do, yeah. You can put it on a bun. You can put it in macaroni and cheese. You can make nachos out of it. Yeah, see, way more like, versatile. It's, real, it's way more, more versatile. versatile. Yeah. I see what you're saying for sure. But pulled pork is going to be my number four. Okay. My number four is pizza. Pizza. Soft spot in the heart. I mean, how could you not like put that in your top five? Mm-hmm. I think you got it. Like pizza, if it wasn't in my top five, it would be an honorable mention for mm-hmm. sure. Um, but I'm going with pizza. I mean, I don't really think I need to explain that at all. No, I don't think so. I, mean, I don't think so at all. Pizza is a very 
It's a go-to. It's a go-to for sure. My number three today is going to be those cheesy potatoes with the, um, like the shredded cheesy potatoes with the cornflakes on top. However, mm, okay. special change. Okay. Instead of cornflakes, use frosted flakes. My girlfriend, Riley's mom, decided one day. Just she, throw frosted she, she flakes. She couldn't get them, there. so she got frosted flakes on them. Changed my life forever. Oh. Forever. Game changer. Gives it a slight sweetness. Those potatoes, I can pound those down. All right. See, I wasn't Whole expecting pan. that out of you. Whole pan, dude. That's number no three. Problem. Yeah. Yep. So, my number three. <laughs> See, it's getting tough because now I'm in the top three. Mm-hmm. I need this to I need to um put these in the correct order. And if I don't, I'm gonna really kick myself for it. But I think my number three is gonna be wings. Okay. Just a good old chicken wing. Yeah. Preferably with like a sweet and hot sauce. Mm-hmm. I like the drums better than the flats. I know that's controversial. I thought you said the opposite last week. I thought you said Did you were I? flats. You said you were a flats guy. See, I think we had a debate about that. You guys will have to go back and listen. But I yeah. feel like I feel like I like both for a different reason. Yeah. But I'm think... saying if this is like my top five foods, if this is my last five things I'm ever eating, I'm going for drums. I don't know. I'm, Questionable. See, Questionable. I think I'm proving. I think I'm proving that it depends on the day. Because I feel it, like I did say flats. You did last say week. flats. I know for a fact you. I said know flats. for a fact I did too. So it just depends on the day for me. Yeah. So we're going sweet and hot wings. I'm going drums this time. Drums. We're switching it up. So now we're into number two. Number two. So I I really wanted to put like another side dish here because like yeah. I put the potatoes That's up the there. That's the crazy thing. I'm not even thinking about side. Yeah, dish. and I thought about dessert, and I'm like, no, nah, I'm leaving dessert out of here because that could. Yeah. That's a whole. That could be another, a whole that's other. That's a whole other top five. Whole other top five. But um, I gotta say, because the potatoes are there, I wanted to put mac and cheese up high. Because mac and cheese is goaded, yeah. goaded. But I, can respect that. I couldn't because I put one side dish up here already. All right. What Number two is pizza. Pizza. I gotta agree, because there's so many toppings. So many different variations. You can so do so much styles. with pizza. You can do so much with Fan pizza. Fan crust, New York style deep dish. The local Joeyo style. Joeyo, dude, I can I smoke a Joeyo's, Joeyo's pizza right pizza, now. Dude. I would literally go right now. If anyone is in the southwestern PA areas, it's a different kind of pizza. I don't even want to recommend it. I I do. I I don't love even think Joeyo's it's that pizza. good. It's just so it. different. It's it's a sweet it's like crust. A, it's, it's a, a very sweet, crust. sweet sauce crust. Everything about it. it's just like candy. It's pizza. It, it's a sweeter pizza. You yeah. got to be ready for it. It's different. I but think it's, it's something it's really you got to try. It's really good. The pierogi pizza lights out. So Shout out to Joey. I I respect pizza as number two. My number two is tacos. Oh, oh I didn't even think about tacos, <laughs> dude. Tacos, man, game changer. Same thing, the versatility of them. You have beef, you can do a pulled pork taco, you can do a fish taco, mm. potato I'm tacos. I'm so mad, I'm so potato mad. Potato tacos, man. Um, Dose Taqueria in Pittsburgh, there's two locations, 12th mm. Street uh, on the south side and then on like in the north side by like Ross Park Mall, there's one. Game changer. Best I've never best been there, I'll have to ever. check it out. What do you say it's it, called? Don't say talkery. Don't say talkery. Yeah. Well, I can't so that's say my that. number two. That's your number two. That means the pressure's on me to pick my number one. I didn't decide on a number one. I bounced. So this between, is like, like right. This yeah, is this is like on here. the fly. I I don't know because I, I've picked so many good options. There's a couple that I've bounced around, and I'm gonna. It's gonna suck because I'm gonna. No matter what I pick, there's gonna be things I'm like, oh, I totally should have done the other one. Right. I wanted to put brisket up here because I am a sucker for brisket. Okay, I can respect that. But I don't think I'm going to. You know, you could put prime rib up there. It's great. This and that. Steak. I didn't even think about steak. 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 Yeah, bro. I'm happy one of us thought because that's not my number one, so... (laughs) The cut I don't think matters, but I want something good. Like give me like a rib a ribeye. It's gotta have some great. Fat, yeah, like a ri- give like, me like I ain't a ribeye. Doing a sirloin, bro. Nah, <laughs> get that the, ain't even a steak. That's a like hamburger. Here. Let that out. You of gotta here. at least do the ribeye. So ribeye, ideally with a bone or without a bone. Hold on. This okay. Ideally, a big old T-bone or a tomahawk. Okay. 
something so you big, like the bone meaty, in it, big and meaty. Well, with the T-bone, you kind of get a couple different steaks. Yeah, you, you get, get like the really different... tender part on the inside you of get, it, the you... outside of it. You get a totally different vibe. It's still juicy, but it's not as like soft yep. to the tongue. Yep. Yep. Yeah, no. Um, but yeah, something, something probably bone in tomahawk, something you know, something okay. like that. Um, do you dip steak and steak sauce? Depends on the steak and depends on where okay. I'm at. Texas Roadhouse has a beautiful steak sauce. I don't do steak sauce, but I'll, what I do like is having like sautéed onions. Okay, yeah. And like I I'll like dip mushrooms. my I'll dip my steak in like mashed potatoes or something. I've never done that. Yeah. Um, I've done like fries in the steak sauce. Because you stuff. get like the that's gravy. how I know it's good. Like Roadhouse, you get the gravy and the mashed potatoes. Shout out to Roadhouse for being great, dude. I can't go there because I'm trying. I've been eating better lately, dude. But you can the, eat good at Texas. Right no, now. you can't. I, bro, you last can't time I was the there, I went there with like six of my buddies. Last time, yeah, we went through like eight, nine baskets of rolls. I don't do a lot of rolls. Oh, dude, I try I have to, to stay off the rolls. To. But I, next time I go, I'm doing it because it's been probably months, dude. There was a stretch where we were going every weekend. When you want to go? When you want to go? Literally when we're done with this. All right, let's go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> but. So my number one, real quick, we got to be running out of time. We yeah. only have so much time on this memory card. Um, it might even be done already. No, I don't think it is. Okay. Ah, we'll find out. If it's not, we'll just like <laughs> put like that pictures suck. of us. That would suck. So my number one is the cheeseburger. Okay. You went, you put it at the top. I love burgers. Man. Yeah. That's you, my thing. You are a big burger guy. I'm a big burger, big guy, burger guy. And we're going to actually come back out with the burger reviews. See, and that's going to be, that's going to be the in. next, count the next in. phase of the content series here on the channel is going to be the reviews. Count me so, in. That's my number one. I don't think you can go wrong with it. I think it's you simple. You can't because it's, basic. it's simple. I say basic, basic but like you it's reliable. It up, it's man, reliable. You, know, you can screw up a burger. Bad. You know what you're getting. You yeah. know, it's reliable. And I I think reliability and there, is key. It's the same thing. You can switch it up a little bit every time. You know, not. it's not going to be old to you. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. So that's that. what we got. I get that. So good episode here today yeah man i was happy with how this I went i think it you turned know, out good I, this I, is like one of the last bros episodes hopefully for a while yeah no i'm, I'm thinking on. you know you know we'll see what we can do for next episode you know yeah. we recorded this one a little late so we'll see what we can do for next yeah, week cause we got to do this next like this next episode is probably gonna end up being pushed back the next weekend again yeah we'll see what happens well we go weekend to weekend it's not that big yeah of a yeah well we're gonna get on but, a schedule eventually yeah. we just gotta work it's hard to work in our schedule sometimes too, right. but yeah, no, we're hoping to get some guests on here soon. We got a few guys lined up, just some really good buddies of ours. Yeah. And we're hoping to get like, now that, you know, the spring sports and stuff are starting, maybe we can get some guests on in that realm. Heck yeah. We can Heck get, yeah. you know, people from the outdoors industry on, like there's so much potential here. Yeah. We got a lot of, we got a lot of connections. Worst case, we're going to sit here and just talk about random stuff for an hour or two. And that's what it's all. Gonna that's what this is all about. To it that's what it's all about. Have a good time. And we have a good time too, so that's yeah. all that hopefully, matters. Hopefully, hopefully next week, you know, we can. It'll be a little warmer. Next maybe, week maybe we're we'll going to be in a heated room, so my yeah, toes maybe, aren't numb. Maybe we'll switch. But it up. But the good thing is, summer's coming, so we can literally do like outdoor. Oh, we will. We will be outdoors and stuff. In this summer. We so, will be outdoors. For we could sure. even like talk around a campfire. I was oh, thinking. dude, that would be so dope. We're coming up with ideas now. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I think is. I think we got to wrap this. up. We got to wrap Cameron it up. Thank Dyson. you guys so much for tuning yep, in. Absolutely, guys. Well, Thank uh, you again. See you next week. Absolutely. Be sure to subscribe, smack the like button. If you're listening on a streaming platform, follow us, download the uh, the episode, and most importantly, have a great week. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Goodbye.